Parts of our area are still recovering from weeks of relentless rainfall. The flooding left behind a mess, destroying roads and homes. WJZ investigator Mike Halgren is live along the Patapsco River with an update on recovery efforts. Mike? Mary, the sun is shining today. That's a very good thing. The water levels are lower, but take a look at the Patapsco, the power of the river. It is still moving fast tonight after flooding that has torn apart so many lives. Three weeks of heavy rain devastated parts of the Baltimore area, and the road to recovery will be long. In Ellicott City, this makeshift memorial for Sergeant Edison Herman sits next to the Patapsco River. The National Guardsman lost his life trying to save someone else. He'll be buried Thursday. But we all think about him in this area, and I'm, and I'm sure we will for many years. The fact that there were not more lives lost seems pretty amazing considering how quickly this flood came up. Beyond Ellicott City, crews are still repairing damage. This is what Route 198 looked like today over the Little Patuxent River. The highway, used by almost 30,000 people, every day washed away and is expected to take a week to fix. I can smell the waste. Um, it, it's just an awful place to be. And in Catonsville, uh, Nikki Green is one of almost 100 homeowners in the Academy Heights neighborhood whose basement's flooded. The water probably came about to like right here mm -hmm. on our legs. Raw sewage poured into her home, the worst of five floods in seven years. She says county leaders haven't done enough to stop it from happening again. Bottom line, we just want answers as a resident. I feel helpless in a lot of this. It was just a never ending flow coming out of the shower, the toilet, the wash tub. We have water actually coming everywhere, all over. Green is frustrated and worried about her future. I see this happening again. It's not a if, it's more of a when. And for us, that's detrimental. I can't do this anymore. She may have to move from the home she loves. She is worried about the health impact of raw sewage in that home where she lives with her husband, children, and her mother. Live along the banks of the Patapsco, Mike Helgren, WJZ. All right, Mike, thank you. Howard County shared these photos on Facebook, recognizing the 911 operators who took some of the first calls for help during last Sunday's flooding in Ellicott City. The calls started just before 4 o'clock. They lasted for six and a half hours. Dispatchers answered more than 1,100 calls. That's about twice as many as on a normal day. The Post thanks all the workers who helped out, some who worked more than 12 hours, others who came in on their day off.